joins us now on the show, Nathan Avaldi. And a good afternoon, sir. Uh, how the heck are you up there in Seattle? I'm doing pretty good. How y'all? How are, how are y'all doing? Uh, we we're we're doing great. We we love having you on the team, and, and and we just like to get an update from you here. What five six starts in? What do you think? You make the right decision coming on back home and being a Ranger? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about joining the team. You know, um, you know, obviously we had our high expectations coming in, and with all the moves that we were able to make in the off season. But I think with everything, the way the team's been able to gel, um, you know, I'm really I'm really excited with where we're at right now. You know, how do you feel about right now being in this rotation? Clearly, you've taken a step up and been absolutely fantastic. 20 consecutive scoreless innings, no DeGrom. But this p- entire pitching staff has been absolutely sensational so far. Yeah, I, I really don't feel like you can say enough about the pitching staff. You know, obviously, when we have DeGrom in there with us and he's healthy, it, it you know, it takes us that, that much further. But even without him right now, I, I feel really confident with where we're at. Um, you know, Martin's been able – y'all saw what he was able to do for y'all last year and you know, I played with him before, and he's just, uh, you know, a great person and, you know, a great guy to have on the team. He keeps everybody, um, you know, at ease and everything like that. Um, you know, again, with Heaney, um, John Gray, Dane Dunning, like he's been able to step up. And, uh, you know, his last start against Anaheim was a huge one for him to kind of set back into the rotation and pick up, you know, where really where DeGrom had you know, left off. So you mentioned you've played with Martin before, obviously, in Boston. How have you seen him grow from the pitcher he was with you as a Red Sox to now having an all-star season last year here in Texas? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he never stops. You know what I mean? He's always trying to get better. He's always working on his craft. You know, he throws all, you know, four or five of his pitches, and he's got a really good mix. He's not afraid to pitch inside, you know, and attack the hitters. And I think that's part of it. You know, he's, uh, he's not afraid of contact. He gets those quick outs, and that's what makes him uh, able to stay out there and last long in those games. Nathan, uh, I I was just the question I have everybody that we talk to in the organization just describes you as a pro's pro, that you're more than willing to help in in any way you can. Was there somewhere along the way that somebody helped you in your your career where you feel like, hey, I I need to do this, uh, the same thing and help others like they helped me? Um, I mean, yeah, everywhere I've been, I feel like I've had somebody reach out to help me. I mean, there's too many guys to count. There wasn't one specific person that, you know, reached out and did it. I mean, it started coming up through the minor leagues. It started in high school, you know, my high school coach helping me out and like, you know, just really emphasizing how important it is to have a good bond in the starting rotation because, you know, to me, I feel like that really controls what happens. You know, the offense can only score so many runs for you, and if the pitching's not holding them at bay, it, you know, it depends on who scores the most runs. If we can go out there and win those games one one to nothing and not give up any runs, you know, that helps us out, and it's a big lift for the team as well. You know, the, the position players don't feel that they have to go out there and score, you know, seven, eight runs every night. You know, they feel like they can score two or three and then just play really good defense. Um, but again, you know, we're, all, we're with each other for, you know, over 162 games. You know, 180 games. I don't. I don't know. Seven, eight months of the season, including spring training, and you know, you always want to be there to be able to help support one another. And uh, I think we've all experienced a lot of this, a lot throughout the game and just in life in general. And to be able to have each other to rely on, and you know, know that we got each other's back. I think that's what's going to help us get to where we ultimately want to be at the end of the year. How seamless is that when you go to a new team to assume that leadership role? Is there like a, a feeling out process or is it just so natural for you? You just can't help yourself. Um, well, I, I think that's a little bit with the experience that I've been able to have with just being around a number of guys in my career, then watching the way that they do it and the way they handle it. Um, just knowing where I am right now in my career and the things that I've witnessed and seen, uh, just really trying to simplify the game and, you know, the game can speed up on us really quick. And those times I feel like I've been most successful have been when I've been able to slow the game down and really just to be able to recall everything that I was doing out there. The moment I kind of start to lose control, those games get carried away from me. And, you know, that's the times when it's the, you know, that's when you struggle. But speaking of struggles, I think that's where, you know, you know past seasons we, you know, haven't been successful here. But you learn a lot from the struggles and you, you're able to have that good experience for the younger guys that have, were able to join the team and, You know, they didn't really have any pressure on themselves to go out there and perform well. And then now that we're out there and, you know, we're winning a lot more ball games, I think it's easier for them to go out there and contribute and help us out. This team has has a lot of young players in the farm system. And as these guys come up, what do young guys 
coming into the big leagues need to know or, or what are things you can tell them that that put them in the best possible position to uh, to have success and, and be comfortable? Well, I think that's part of, you know, the the key to having, you know, a lot of guys in the starting rotation. We have that experience. So, I mean, they're really not coming up here like trying to do anything different. You know, they, they're up here for a reason. You know, they've earned that opportunity to be here and to help us out. You know, and if we're out there going deep in the games, you know, it, it, you don't feel like you have to stop the bleeding in any way when they're making their debut, especially with where we are right now in this situation. And, you know, I try to remind them it's the same game. The lights are brighter. Obviously, there's more fans out there, but – if you if you've prepared for it enough, you sh- it shouldn't be too overwhelming. Obviously, you're going to have the jitters those first like that first inning out there, but then in the moment you can settle in and again slow the game down, I think that's when you they're able to you know be themselves and um, show everybody why they're here. Nathan, when you're going along as well as you have, do people leave you alone and just let you do what you need to do, or is this when you need more communication and 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 talk about things, or, or do you just like you know? I got an idea. I got a plan. I need uh, this. Is how I'm going to approach each time that I go out on the hill. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm a very, um, you know, I try not to be superstitious. I try to talk to everybody. Like on my start days, like I, I'm definitely not a person that people would be avoiding on my start days. They know a day I'm starting. You know, I'm excited to be starting. But then also too, I like uh, it's just the routine of things. You know, I continuously try to do what I've been doing. You know, day in day out. Um, Try not to think of it of any more, anything other than another start. Um, I, I mean, I, I try to have pride in going just day to day. I try not to think about you know what's going to happen in a week or where I'm going to be at, how the arm's going to be feeling. It's, you know, it's a very long season. I don't want to jump ahead and, you know, I don't want to have any setbacks or anything like that. So I try to keep it one day at a time and kind of go about it as I normally would. And that's one of the nice things about being a starter is you know you get your five day routine and you get an extra day. It's like sweet, you get an extra day. If not, like you're 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 good with your rotation and you're good with the, uh, where you are right now. Nathan Avaldi with us here in the G-Bag Nation on 105.3 The Fan, pitcher of the first place Texas Rangers right now. And, you know, Nathan, it's, it's been a while. You, you mentioned this. You, you know the struggles that the Rangers have had over the last few years. At 21 and 13, you were a part of a World Series championship team there in Boston. Do you see any similarities with this year's Rangers team? Or you know what it takes in a clubhouse. How far can this team go? No, yeah, I mean, I absolutely I see it. Um, I think one of the biggest, Biggest things that I've seen so far this year is, you know, we with uh, DeGrom and then with Seager going down, we've had a lot of guys step up in, you know, numerous amounts of ways. Um, you know, you got Ezekiel Duran who's been able to play really good shortstop and having great at-bats. Um, Josh Young has been outstanding over at, over there at third. We've had, um, you know, a lot of our outfielders, Jankowski before he got hurt, but Grossman's back to being him, his normal self, the Oscar, um, you know, Dolly out there in the outfield. Like, everybody's able to, we're able to keep everybody fresh because everybody else, everybody else is doing their job. You know, we're not having to lie on just, you know, one or two guys in the lineup to get the job done. And, um, you know, I think that's, I think that's part of it. You know, we're, I, I still feel like there's a lot of room for us to improve. You know, we've had a, to me, that first month of the season where we did what we, what we expected us to do, you know, and this month with as many games that we have on the road, I think that's a little bit more of a challenge for us, but you know, this uh, first road series, we've been doing pretty well so far. You'll be happy to know, Nathan, that uh, your teammate Dane Dunning voted you as the guy he'd most trust on the team to babysit his uh, future kid. He doesn't have any yet, but uh, he's about to have one. So I thought you'd like to know that. Yeah, I've got, I've got two kids myself. So, I mean, I obviously I'm very honored that he would select me to be the one to watch him. <laughs> now, is, is your favorite date to take the kids on uh, a donut date? Because that's my particular favorite. Uh, my son will not pass on donuts. He loves some donuts and some and some kolaches. Anytime I any anytime anytime spending time with my kids, it's always great with me. And um, you know, it's tough because they're both in school now, so I don't get to see them as much as I normally did. Um, you know, during the season, I would always have them out there with me everywhere I go. They make a lot more of the road trips, but now with them being in school, it's a little bit harder now not being able to get to see them. But thankfully, with where we are with technology, being able to FaceTime and talk to them all the time, it's you know that five minutes of FaceTime's nice. What's the top donut? Um, my daughter goes with the sprinkles. Doesn't really matter. She either wants pink or purple. You know, they're all the same. I feel like, but <laughs> yeah, my, son, yeah. uh, my son's pretty much a glaze or chocolate. But he's he's real big into the kolaches right now. He loves those ham and cheese kolaches. So Respect, good, bro. So yeah. we did the uh, top ten burger toppings earlier. I do a top ten list every day. What would be your number one burger topping? Happy National Burger Month, by the way. 
Ooh, um, I'm a big bacon, bacon ham or bacon uh, cheese. I don't, not too much, uh, like you know what I mean. I, I like to keep it simple, just a nice bacon cheeseburger. What do you like to do in Seattle uh, uh, during the day? Um, you know, I haven't really gone and done out, done too much. Um, Looks like a pretty cool place to hang out down there by the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially this time of year, Seattle's so pretty and you know really nice out here. The weather's been great. You know, it's not freezing or anything like that. So um, it's just a nice to go out walking around the streets and stuff, get that fresh air. How do you like but, pitching? I mean, uh, how do you like pitching in Oakland? I actually I like it. You know, it's one of those stadiums I feel like I've done fairly well at. Um, I do enjoy like having all that that extra ground where we can get some of those foul balls and hopefully get some quicker outs. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I like pitching there in Oakland. You seem super pumped to be back in the great state of Texas. You're a Texas kid. Was this something that you kind of always were hoping for, you know, later on in your career to, to return to Texas and, and maybe play with the Rangers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, I've, I've always thought about it, you know, what it would be like to, you know, I, Honestly, it was Houston, like thinking about yeah. what it'd be like to play in Houston mm-hmm. because it's only 30 minutes from home for me. But being out here in Dallas, I think it's that perfect fit because all the family has to kind of commit to, a, you know, a three to four hour drive to come out and stay and, you know, watch some baseball and stuff. So I feel like I'm not getting hounded too much by, you know, ticket requests or things like that. But I couldn't be more happy than where we are right now. And, you know, especially as a team and coming together. And this is the first year being over here and just the way the guys have been able to turn the page from, you know, the, um, previous upsets during the se- or the years. And Nathan, I was going to ask you about with with Jonah Heim is, is the catcher, and you know, and he's he's having such a nice year at the plate. But you know, is is that the hardest thing for when you change teams to dealing with new catchers it, when you when you come in, and and how quickly do you develop that uh, that that uh, rapport with them? Yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely the most important thing, I think, is building a relationship with your catcher, especially, you know, guys that you haven't worked with before. Um, obviously, I've worked with Sandy Leon before in the past. So when I, you know, first got up here, throwing to him was fine. Um, but in spring training, it's, you know, they did a really good job of making sure that, like, Mitch and Jonah, Sam Huff, like, all those guys are available and they're coming out there to catch your bullpen so they can see what you're working on. And then it's just them learning the trust of, you know, that you have in your pitches. And I think that's one of the other challenges I have is, you know, I have five pitches and, you know, I don't want to shy away from any of them and I want to pick the right times to be using those pitches. And now with the pitch clock, I feel like we have to be on a faster, like get on the same page faster. And that becomes a little bit more of a challenge. But, man, in these last two starts that I've had with Jonah, I thought he's done outstanding. Um, you know, we I think I threw to him the first two games of spring training and then it was Mitch from the rest of the way out. And then – when Mitch got hurt, I ended up throwing to Sandy up here. And then, um, you know, like Bocho was talking to me about it too. He's, you know, he told me that it wasn't, he wasn't like trying to pair me up with any specific catcher. It was just the way that everything had kind of unfolded because it's important to have the catchers, um, you know, save their legs because again, it's a long season and Jonah's been raking at the plate. And we want him to stay as hot as possible. And it, we, again, we got a long season, but he's done a great job back there behind the plate. How much clubhouse roasting uh, would go to the teammate if you guys found out that he was on vacation with his girlfriend or wife and they were wearing matching outfits? <laughs> was that Jonah? <laughs> no, 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 not no, Jonah. It's somebody, one of our teammates. Yeah, one, one of, of our teammates, teammates here at yeah. the station. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like we have every right to crush him for this. I'm curious your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely say so. I mean, it, it's definitely good for a nice roasting. Even, I mean, I understand it. You know, I probably wouldn't do it. My wife would want me to, but I don't know if I'd be able to pull through. But <laughs> and it's always a good roast session. Who's, who's the best, who's the best roaster on the team? Is there is there somebody that's perpetually good at, at dishing it out? We've got a few that are just the subtle jabs that are pretty good. Mitch is really good at it. Garver, um, Will Smith's pretty good. I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Brad Miller, Simeon, a little bit, not too much, but. You know, just those subtle ones give the boys a good laugh. All the, all the veterans, it seems like. That's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, sir, uh, thanks so much for everything you do, not only for the team on the field, but in the in the clubhouse, man. You're just an absolute blessing for this team, and, and we love watching you rock out there. So keep giving them hell, and we'll be pulling for you. Thanks, thanks, fellas. I appreciate it.